Right, we're going live in several different places today, so the short countdown clock will ensure that we are live everywhere when it gets down to zero. And uh, those colours just match, don't they? They do. Yeah. And my head goes round in circles following that little dot. <laughs> it's entertaining for for a little while. I think if it's over uh, thirty seconds. Mm. Right, so I can now dis disappear that and say hello and welcome to Ask Angelica. Hello, Angelica. Hello, Stephen. Right, okay, now uh, we've got some tongue twisters today, but I'm going to say welcome to the show. And you are watching live Ask Angelica's German language tuition, idioms, and tongue twisters. and this week is B. Last two weeks ago was A. This week is B. And this is officially season four, episode two. And if you want to watch any of the previous ones, just go to Angelica's YouTube channel. And they're all there, Angelica, are they not? Oh, they are. All of them. Every single In one of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're actually doing and what's coming up in this short broadcast? Well, I'd, I've, I've been meaning to do idioms and tongue twisters for quite a while. And um, so I thought if we put them in some sort of order, that makes it a little bit easier for me to um, choose them rather than just randomly choosing some every session. Um, so last time, two weeks ago, we had one tongue twister with a lot of A's in it. And mm -hmm. we had various idioms. Um, where the key word was a word beginning with A. Um, so this time uh, it's B. And you're going to be really lucky because you don't just have one tongue twister, you have two. And they're slightly more difficult than the one last time. Oh, goody. Yes. Right. Okay. To, look now, forward to, now. to be honest, I do not practice. And um, as we go through each of the idioms, we'll do them in German, then in English. You can say the German along with me. We can't hear you. There's no problem with that. Uh, and um, say hello to Chris. Hello, and Chris. Chris, is, Chris is joining us from Belgium. And Chris says, hello, Stephen and Angelica. Thank you, Chris. Hello to you, too. Uh, OK, well, shall we start? Go on. I'll take I'll, everybody knows who we are now, so I'll hide that. So it's just the two of us on screen. And we'll go that way. Okay, so let's start with phrase number one. I did check this with you. I was tempted to say red, but it's not red. So I'm going to go red nicht um den Eisen Breierum. Oh, well spotted. Yes, you're absolutely right. Red nicht um den Eisen Brei herum. Okay, now uh, if you want to help me uh, by saying what the translation is or that would be good but um uh, something called no there's some words in there i do not recognize and Re what, what, the problem what, is they, they don't help okay what is red short for rede, rede. And the verb is reden which is to speak or talk so not to talk or don't talk yeah. Oh, sure. I don't don't talk about uh, the, the, the things which are called. <laughs> no, heis in this case is the the hot. Uh, um, don't don't literally. It's something like don't talk around the hot uh, uh, broth, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay, so but we have a name for that one, and uh, that sounds. Probably just as weird. Okay, and let's bring up the translation. And literal translations don't work here. Doing it word for word <laughs> just doesn't cut it. You need to do the whole sentence, and then you can go for the English equivalent, which is "don't beat around the bush." Or well, yeah, I mean that's that's a, a well-known idiom. Uh, but how does it? How does? Don't know. How do the how do the two fit? We don't know. I've, okay. I've done some research on some of the um, idioms, but um, somehow I've forgotten about this one. Uh, probably because don't beat around the bush uh, 
Well, I, I guess it's it's beating around the bush. If you're literally imagining it, uh, um, somebody's going around this bush instead of just coming out with whatever they need to say. And I guess it's the same with the 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 hot cereal or the the hot broth. You're you're walking around it instead of just getting out and say what you need to say. Say what you mean. Mm. Yeah. And out, Chris. And Chris is saying the difficulties. Yeah. Which Indeed. that's why I wanted to do a show on idioms because idioms are difficult. We all use them in our languages. Yeah. I mean, as soon as you saw the English sentence, don't beat around the bush, you said, Oh, yes, of course. We know that one. That's very common. Yeah. But for a foreigner learning English, they may not recognize it or not even may in the beginning they will not know what it means and, and that for english, to anybody learning a foreign language yeah an english person learning german is going to be confused and i'm playing that part today not I'm at the end of this show <laughs> i'm playing the confused englishman okay so uh we come on i'm just scrolling a bit so i've got all lined up and phrase number two, alles in butter. Mm -hmm. Alles right. in butter. Okay, so everything's in the butter. <laughs> no. Which, of course, doesn't make any sense whatsoever, no. does it? No, it doesn't. No, it, doesn't. it means everything is okay. And uh, I've, I've done my research on this one. I thought, why, <laughs> why is everything in butter? And I think there were there's there's probably more than one explanation, but the one of them is um, and I'm, I've written it down here so I can remember okay. it. That's in the Middle Ages when dealers had to transport glass or glass wares, they yeah. poured liquid butter around the items because the butter then hardened and the glasses yeah. would not break. And then they transported them, heated them. So when everything was in butter, everything was okay. Right. Okay. So we can't take literally uh, the translation or the equivalent idiom in English is, oh, no, it's not that one. It's this one. Everything's okay. Yeah. So if you want to bamboozle anybody, Allah's in butter means that's okay all good right phrase number three i haven't seen any numbers yet i'm i'm i don't think i will because this, this, there won't be any numbers this is good er macht heute blau yeah er macht heute blau it, today is making blue i well, made today blue. making blue, today is blue. Okay. It doesn't make any sense. But your it's a blue day is actually a little exclamation um, explanation. Um, I so I think we need to say first what it means in English. Okay. We can do that. So in English, it's he's skipping work today. Yeah. And one explanation for that one was that there was actually a blue day, which was the blue Monday when the dyers those who were dying clothes, they had nothing to do. They had to wait for the dye to dry uh, and turn yeah. blue. So they so had the day off. They had the weekend, production stopped. And then before they could start on Monday, they had to wait for the... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So er macht heute blau, which is makes their blue, skipping work today. Okay, first four. Etwas auf die lange Bank schieben. Mm -hmm. Etwas auf die lange Bank schieben. All right, something off the long bank. Bench? Ben oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, we know benches. We've, we've visited many benches. Um, <laughs> something, from, something from the long bench. Sheben. A sheben is sort of to push along. To push along something on the long bench. Uh, I didn't research this one. What I possibly should have done is research the English idiom. 
Mark, maybe you can explain the English equivalent. Well, let's, let's go for the English equivalent then, uh, to phrase four. Uh, to put something on the back burner. Ah, right, okay, yes, I can do this. I can't explain I can't explain why back burner. Well, yeah, I can actually, well, sort of. Um, put something on the back burner is to put it on one side for later so that you're not actually going to do it now but you don't want to forget it so you put it on the back burner so it's still kept warm so you can return to it and you don't have to return for it from cold you can just pick it up and go with it i haven't a clue <laughs> sounds good though well but we're, we're pushing it on a long bench i guess normally you've got things next to you but if you're pushing it along further off um for later yeah it is it is uh i you you probably got it there, which is putting in something off to later. Yeah. So rather than doing it now, you exactly it. Yeah. putting it on the back burner means, means you won't forget it. Okay. And phrase five. Ich habe keinen Bock. Yeah, ich habe keinen Bock. I have no. Now, Bock is, is short for Ziegenbock, which is a billy goat. <laughs> I have no billy goats. <laughs> I can't think. I can, I've got to be honest to you, I have no billy goats. Just, I can't think of a, an English <laughs> saying which goes anywhere close to that. It doesn't. Grace, any ideas? <clears throat> and anybody else who's watching any ideas, if you're watching us and you make a comment we'll show that comment on screen to do with chris's uh, this is interactive if you're watching where it says we'll get the comments later we will do that because we're broadcasting everywhere today all of which is a way of trying to work out what the billy goats have got to do with it and uh, <laughs> <laughs> take the short option and go for the english equivalent that's not my business oh no you've gone too far ah this okay. one could uh, be... did they get mixed up it, they did, yeah. A carbon cannon bock should be, yeah. It's, I can't it's, be bothered. That's I it. I can't be bothered. Oh, good. Yeah, I can't be bothered. It comes from, as I said, Ziegenbock is a billy goat, and they're usually stubborn. And nice. this was teenage talk. I can't remember how long ago, and uh, it sort of just stopped. They, they just can't be bothered, just like a billy goat who will not do yeah. what it's supposed to do. Am I bothered? Okay. And so <laughs> That's different. Am I, this this okay. is really, I, I can't be bothered with doing whatever you told me to do. Ikaba can and Bok, and I can't be bothered. Oh, to Chris. And Chris is saying, I have no money-making machine. That was oh. the previous one. Isn't it? Um and all oh, right okay Doug that will giving... go with the next one which right. where you okay. by accident showed the english already okay so thank you doug uh that's not my business problem and uh the next phrase which is phrase seven yeah well we haven't had the german yet that should have been before but if they got mixed up it may come now that's it yeah Oh, right. Okay. Phrase six. Yeah. This is yeah. a live show and we just proved it. Uh, phrase six. Das ist nicht mein Bier. Yeah. Das ist nicht mein Bier. Coming back to it being a live show, maybe the video show can't be bothered and hasn't got any bock either. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you, Doug. Das ist nicht mein Bier. And we already have the English. That's not my business or problem. And I looked into what the beer has got to do with it. Okay. And I found the fantastic explanation. This goes back to 19th century student life in Germany. Beer was very, I don't know why they're saying 19th century student life. Beer was very important. I'm sorry, when I was a student, beer was very important as well. But we just went to the pubs to drink it or we bought the beers. Um, but in those days, um, students apparently worked harder for promised beer. Ah, unless right. it wasn't important. Okay. In which case they said, oh, that's nicht mein beer. 
and didn't it's bother doing it. <laughs> not worth doing it for a beer. Okay, no. so that's not my business or problem. Right, I think we're, we've sorted the cup prompter out, and we're now on to phrase seven. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Yeah, ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. I only understand stations. No, is that right? That's the literal translation. That would be the literal translation, yeah. I anybody anybody uh great show guys 6 30 a.m in california time to get to work have a, good, have a good day doug we'll catch you later thanks for listening before work <laughs> yeah and of course we know doug back from the uh academy days uh okay so it's christian nur bahnhof i only understand stations okay you got me i i surrender Okay, it's all Greek to me. Oh, okay. Anything I behind this? I well, I always thought because I knew that "ich verstehe nur Bahnhof" means it's all Greek to me, which is sort of you know, if well, it doesn't mean much for people who do speak Greek because they would understand it. But for us, it means I don't understand what you're talking about. And I always thought if I stay in Urbanov was because, you know, when you're sitting at the station and you're hearing the announcements and you can't hear, understand yeah. them. And I oh, thought well, it yeah. was that, but it isn't at all. And uh, mm -hmm. this, this, I mean, I'm learning so much here. I've, I've known this idiom, idiom for such a long time, but I never realized what the background is. And I need to read this as well because I, I copied this from, I think it was Wikipedia. And they said, before and at the beginning of the First World War, many people sort of whipped up by corresponding propaganda were truly enthusiastic about the war. When in the course of the war, their atrocities and crimes became visible, this soon changed. At some point, the soldiers simply wanted to go home. In the process, the railway station became a symbol for the war-weary soldiers, signifying their imminent return home. All conversations or in, on any other subject were cut short with the sentence, I only understand railway stations. Wow. And I didn't know that at all. That was absolutely fantastic to, to read and find out. So we're all learning. That's good. Mm. Of course, that doesn't fit with the English translation. It's or the English idiom. It's all Greek to me. No, no. So it's somebody must have been talking to some Greek people and couldn't understand a word. I don't know. No idea. Ich verstehe nichts. Yeah. It's the literal translation of "it's all Greek to me." Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. No, no. I haven't decided yet whether this is my favourite part, <laughs> because this this is a tongue twister section. Now this is, this, we're, you've reversed things here, haven't you? I have. I'm I'm giving you the translation first, but actually, these two tongue twisters happen to be just as bad in English as they are in German. Okay, so first I'm going to read phrase eight in English. And then we're going to attempt the tongue twister. You can do this. If I'm, I'm going to go for it anyway. Okay, so phrase eight. A tongue twister in English as well. <laughs> oh, okay. And deep breath. Brewer bar brews brown beer. Brown beer brews brewer bar. Well done. Now uh, do the say, German one. I've got to say, I don't check these beforehand. I do cut and paste them in the studio but i don't read them on purpose so that you get a, a well a genuine experience okay so the challenge is to read the german deep breath beer brauer bauer braut brown is beer brown is beer braut beer brauer bauer well done i don't actually think i could do it any faster <laughs> Oh, we, we should have a race sometime. Not, not, <laughs> not necessarily now. Uh, what's the literal translation of that? Well, you've just had it. Well, that's why I gave you the English first. So, being oh, a, a brewer. Right. We're literal now. 
Okay, this, this, this is, is yes, yeah, sorry, this, this is literal. This is a literal translation. Uh, tongue twisters don't make much sense anyway. So here I'm giving you a literal translation. And in today's show, both tongue twisters are actually tongue twisters in English, or the, they're as difficult and could be tongue twisters in English as well. Right. Okay, so we've, Angelica's got two tongue twisters this week. So here we go again. Deep breath. Brushes with black bristles brush better than brushes with blue bristles. That could be a tongue twister in English as well, couldn't it? It could. You said it quickly and I said it. Yes, it could be. Right. Okay. So let's uh, look at the German equivalent, uh, direct translation. And deep breath. Bursten mit schwarzen Borsten, Bursten besser als Bursten mit blauen Borsten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bursten mit schwarzen Borsten, Bursten besser als Bursten mit blauen Borsten. We have to remind ourselves is brushes with black bristles brush better than brushes with blue bristles i don't think that's true for a moment they might <laughs> they look more like brushes probably because we expect the bristles to be dark no of course it doesn't make any sense this tongue twisters don't make any sense at all they're they're just there <laughs> to get your pronunciation get your tongues twisted Bursten mit schwarzen Borsten, Bursten besser als Bursten mit blauen Borsten. Okay. Oh. Right, okay, well, we got through that and we learned something along the way. We all learned something along the way. So what we're going to do now is rewind back to the top. And if I can find phrase one, I think I've got it. Then what will happen now as a recap is that uh, I just need to take everything off screen. No, I don't need to press. I need to press the button. Just a minute. OK, hide that. Go up to phrase number one. And OK, so the German is read by Angelica and I'm going to read the English. Red nicht um den heißen Brei herum. Now, this is not a literal translation. Don't beat around the bush. Alles in butter. Everything's okay. Er macht heute blau. He's skipping work today. And we've got the explanation for that one. If you didn't, if you missed it, just rewind. First of all. Etwas auf die lange Bank schieben. Okay, and to put something on the back burner. Press five. Ich hab keinen Bock. Ich auch. <laughs> I can't be bothered. Okay, so the next phrase, phrase six. Das ist nicht mein Bier. And the equivalent is that's not my business or problem. We also had from uh, Doug, uh, it's not my circus, not my monkey. So we'd add that to the collection. So thank you, Doug. Okay, so that's not my business problem. Uh, okay, so that was, that's his Nick mine beer. Okay, so we're on to the next one, which is your reason, <laughs> Jeff. Go on. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Oh, and um, it's all Greek to me. Okay, now I'm going to read. We've got now the tongue twisters. I'm going to read the English, and then we'll listen to the correct pronunciation of the tongue twister itself in German. We hope. We hope. Okay. Brewer bar brews brown beer. Brown beer brews brewer bar. Which the tongue twister in German is? Beer Brauer, Bauer Braut, Braunes Bier, Braunes Bier, Braut, Bier Brauer, Brauer. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Beer Brauer, Bauer Braut, Braunes Bier, Braunes Bier, Braut, Bier Brauer, Bauer. Well done. Well done. This is spared off there. This is spared off. It's not easy, is it? No. Uh, right. The brushes with black bristles brush better than brushes with blue bristles. And here we go. 
and you got this. I know you got this. So I'm going to bring it up on screen in your own time. Bürsten mit schwarzen Borsten, Bürsten besser als Bürsten mit blauen Borsten. There we have it. And um, that's it. We've done it. We've done it. Yeah. We've been through all the sentences. Okay. And learn something. And get a great show to you to talk about anything you like and uh, the next show, which well, you're about. The, the, the next show may be a little bit shorter. Um, I'll have to see because the next letter is, of course, the letter C. And there aren't that many German words beginning with C. I have found one tongue twister which is with CH rather than C, um, but uh, I haven't found any idioms yet. So that will be a great challenge for me to find some idioms where a German word, where hopefully the key word starts with a C. And Chris is saying thank you for the show. Uh, this show has been broadcast on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, in Angelica, Ask Angelica. And if you want to know more about German, Go to Ask Angelica. It's also been live on our webpage. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time. Until then, take care. Uh, auf Wiedersehen. No, you say it. You say it. Yeah. I'll, I'll... Tschüss von mir. Und tschüss von mir. Bis später. Danke, Chris.